regard to the evolution of Homo sapiens, you have Charles Darwin in Science giving an explanation that it's because of the process of natural selection that the human beings have evolved. Now this is, seems to be in contradiction with the Islamic belief that we, have, we are the children of Adam salam. Now how can this be reconciled? This is a very important question. No lecture of mine on this topic of Quran modern science is complete without this question. I have given this talk in various places in Canada, in USA, in UK, in Saudi. Never is this topic complete. Never is the question also complete without this important question of theory of evolution. Charles Darwin, sister posed the question, how can you reconcile the Quran with Darwin's theory of evolution? Sister, I have not come across any book which says fact of evolution. All the books say theory of evolution. There is no book I have come across saying fact of evolution. If you read the book by Charles Darwin, The Origin of Species, it says that Charles Darwin went on an island by the name of Calatropis on a ship named as HMS Beagle. And there he found birds pecking at niches. Depending upon the ecological niches they pecked, the beaks sorry, kept on becoming long and short. This observation was made in the same species, not in different species. Charles Darwin wrote a letter to his friend Thomas Thompson in 1861 saying, I do not believe in natural selection, the word that you use. I don't believe in theory of evolution because I've got any proof. I only believe in it because it helps me in classification of embryology, in morphology, in rudimentary organs. Charles Darwin himself said that there were missing links. He didn't agree with it. He himself said that there were missing links. Therefore, if I have to insult someone, that if you were present at Darwin's time, this theory would have been proved right. Trying to insinuate that he looks like an ape. It's a joke we make. The reason that this theory, in most parts of the world, it is taught as good as fact. You know why? Even I was in school, I learned about Darwin's theory. And even today they are taught. You know what the reason is, sister? The reason is because that if you analyze the church, the church was against science previously. And you know the incidents that they sentenced Galileo to death. They sentenced Galileo to death. Why? Because he said certain statements in astronomy, etc., which went against the Bible, so they sentenced him to death, for which the Pope apologized now. So, when Charles Darwin came up with a theory which goes against the Bible, they didn't, they didn't want any sufficient proof. An enemy of my enemy is my friend. So all the scientists, most of them, they support the theory because it went against the Bible, not because it was true. They only supported it because it went against the Bible. All the stages we have mentioned, sister. All the stages. Lucy. There were four hormonites. Science tells us that there are four hormonites. First is Lucy, along with its guide, the Australopithecus, which died about three and a half million years, nice age. Then next came the Homo sapiens, who died about 500,000 years ago. Then came the Neanderthal man, who died 100 to 40,000 years ago. Then came the fourth stage, the Cro-Magnon. There is no link at all between these stages. According to P.P. Grasse, in 1971, who held the chair of evolutionary studies in Paris, in the Shoujo University, he said, it is absurd. We cannot say who are ancestors based on fossils. I can give you a list of hundreds of scientists and Nobel Prize winners who speak against Darwin's theory. Hundreds! If you know of Sir Albert Georgi, who got the Nobel Prize for inventing, for inventing the vitamin C, he wrote a book, The Crazy Ape and Man, against Darwin's theory. Again, if you read Sir Fred Hoyle's works, he wrote several works against Darwin's theory. If you know about Rupert Talbot, this person wrote a new theory of evolution against Darwin's theory. It's unthinkable. You cannot think that we are created from the apes. If you know of Sir Frank Salisbury, he was a biologist. He said it is illogical to believe in Darwin's theory. If you know about white meat, Sir White Meat, he wrote a book 
against David Sey. He was so a biologist. Several, you can give a list of hundreds. Today it is taught in the schools. Why? I told you. Media is in their hand. Otherwise, there's no proof at all. There are certain proofs at lower levels. An amoeba at lower species level, amoeba can change to paramecia. Quran does not say amoeba cannot change to paramecia. Quran does not say. If they have got proof, can be possible. It's not against the Quran. But there's no proof at all. People talk about molecular biology theory. They talk about genetic coding. According to Hansis Craig, who's authority in this field, he said it is unimaginable. Again, if you do that ratio, the probability of one DNA forming from ape to human being is again zero. If I start calculating, I think we'll get bored again. You know the calculation I told you for one protein molecule? It is somewhat similar from one DNA. It is not possible at all. You know there was a theory recently that homosexuality is genetic. And when I read in the Times of India, I thought, surely, the moment I attend the next lecture on Sunday in IRF, I'll be asked this question. If homosexuality is genetic, how can Allah blame us? Quran speaks against homosexuality. And I said that, see, this is a theory. Wait till it gets established. It's a theory. Don't comment on that. Within the matter of span of this few months, it was proved to be illogical. And the person who propounded this theory that homosexuality is genetic himself was an homosexual. Therefore, I said, I'm going to give my talk on scientific facts, not on theories and assumptions. Darwin's theory has not been proven. We have not been created from ape. There are hundreds of scientists who speak against that, and Quran speaks against that also. Quran says the first man was Adam, peace be upon him. Inshallah, they'll discover it hundred years afterwards, or maybe a thousand years afterwards. Today, there is research showing that human beings have been created from one pair. Again, it's just a theory. It supports the Quranic verse that human beings have been created from one pair, male and female. It's just a theory. Therefore, I don't quote that in my talk. Inshallah, it will be established 50 years afterwards or 100 years afterwards. Then we know that Quran conciliates with this part. So far, it's not conflicting. It's not conflicting with established science at all. Hope that answers the question.